Now some materials are hard to machine. In fact, if you remember a couple weeks ago, we did a video on Nitronic 60, and that was difficult, but not necessarily super difficult. Some materials are really kind of a pain, and this Haynes 188 is a pain. Haynes 188 is what is known as a super alloy. Well, super alloys have really been around since probably World War II. There was a little bit of development before the war and definitely a lot of development after the war, and it really came concurrent with the development of the gas turbine engine. When you think of a gas turbine engine, what do you think of? You think of high heat, demanding applications, you need materials that are gonna be able to withstand that environment. And that's what super alloys are. They are high performance materials that are engineered to perform in very harsh, extreme, demanding applications. Now, the development of these super alloys really was necessary. Before that, aluminum and stainless steel were your primary metals you would see in these applications. But again, as the engines got hotter, as the applications became more and more demanding, more and more harsh, you needed materials materials that were going to stand up. Hence, we had the development of Hastelloy's, Inconel's, and among those, Haynes 188. But one thing that it's not is easily machinable. We're going to take this and we're going to show you how to machine it on our Puma TT right here. We're going to use two turrets. We got lots of tools and we're going to help make this task easy for you. have any materials that you'd like to see us cut in the future, let us know down in the comments below and please always hit the like, hit the subscribe. All right, so we finished our OD roughing operation and she machined pretty well. She definitely squealed a little bit, but that's not surprising with a material like Haynes 188. A couple things I want to mention, your speed, speed, step to cut, this is something that you're probably going to have to tweak a little bit based upon your current circumstance and the tools that you're using. We did use a KCS-10B from Kenna Metal. That insert is designed for difficult aerospace alloys, super alloys, and whatnot. So tough insert for tough materials. Now I went with 150 SFM and I did a 100 thou variable depth of cut. I was able to program that in Mastercam. That means sometimes I'll take a little bit more than 100 and it'll kind of taper out. Then when it comes back for the second cut, it'll take a lighter cut and feed back into a heavier. All right, so we came in carbide drill, drilled the hole out. Uh, kind of slow drill right again, Haynes 188, tough material. We're feeding in just uh, about one nine per tooth. We came out to about two inches per minute. That's a two inch hole. So we're basically in cut for a minute. And in Haynes 188, that can be kind of a long minute. But she performed well. We got a hole inside. Let's go ahead, we'll jump on the next operation here. We're gonna rough out our undercut here for our thread and then we'll do a finish pass and we'll make her look all nice and pretty. Now what characterizes the super alloys is a couple things. One is their high strength, especially under those high temp conditions, which is really a throwback to the aerospace heyday when they were first invented. They also have extreme resistance to environmental corrosion and oxidation, as well as creep and fatigue resistance and surface stability. All that is to say, these materials hold up. Okay, all right, so we have finished the outside of the part. You can see right here. Now, one thing I wanna mention about Haynes 188 is it does work hard and rapidly. That means when I'm coming across with my roughing insert, right beneath the layer where I'm dragging across the metal, it is hardening that material and making it very difficult to come back across. So when I do my finish pass, I wanna take a relatively healthy depth of cut. So for this part right here, I made sure that I took a 20 thou depth of cut, allows me to get beneath 
that layer a little bit and have a nice clean finish pass. If you try to do some skim cuts, sometimes it won't turn out very well because you're just really scraping across that hard layer. It's hard on your insert. You don't get a good part finish. Basically, take a good healthy depth of cut for your finish pass. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and dial in our thread, very similar to the way we did our OD. A uh, couple thoughts again, remember that work hardening. I tried to avoid taking some spring passes, so when you program your thread, just keep that in mind. You don't wanna run across that material over and over again. It will be hard on your insert, and again, your surface finish may not be that ideal. Now we went ahead again, we backed everything off about 20 thou. You wanna watch the front of your thread, and the rear of your thread. Depending on how big it is, depending on whether your insert is sharp or dull, you can get a difference in your readings from front to back. And if you have a very fine pitch, that may be something you wanna pay attention to. And our last check is gonna be our ring gauge here. We got green for go. And be careful not to damage your threads. Make sure that it goes all the way down. Cause remember I talked about sometimes that thread can taper. All right, we're good there. Now, it's only half the check. You want to check it with your no-go gauge as well. Now, one word of caution right here. Make sure you're using a ring gauge to check your threads. Some people may be tempted to not use the ring gauge or not acquire it. If, they, if they're too expensive, they might try to use just the pitch mic. Now, you can do that, but it is dangerous. If there's any interference down there, sometimes at the root of your thread, maybe due to a small chip in your cutter, um, you may pass with a pitch mic and you won't pass with a ring gauge, and a ring gauge is going to reflect the actual mating part. So I would highly recommend that you use a ring check for final uh, thread inspection. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish this ID, and then we're gonna transfer the part. Alright, so we went ahead and we finished the ID turning here for OP1, so op one's complete now. We'll go ahead and check it with some gauge pins. Alright, all right. got our go pin here, that's nice, nice and tight, good little pop, no go pin, doesn't even start. All right, so op one is complete. We're gonna come down with our sub spindle here. We'll grab it, we'll part it off, and we'll send it to the other side of the machine where we'll finish up op two. It's gonna get pretty tight in here uh, with the part off, but that's the name of the game when you got two turrets and two chucks. All right, let's get it done. Okay, so there's only one thing that's maybe a little bit sketchier than drilling a part, and that's parting off a part, especially with a material like Haynes 188. But she performed well, and as you can see, we have more material here ready to be machined for another OP1, and our OP2 is over on this side in our sub spindle. Now, normally I would run these in a simultaneous manner, but for demonstration purposes, we're doing OP1 over here and OP2 over here, so let's get to finishing up that part.
Okay, so our roughing operation was pretty quick, so I went ahead and ran two operations. We did go ahead and face the part. We left a little bit to finish, and we cut this chamfer. We also came in with our Harvey 3 half-inch end mill and went ahead and cut this hex. Don't really like skim cuts when it comes to material like Hanes 188, so one rough, one finish, we're good to go. Next, I'm gonna come in here with a, another Harvey 3, a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the center of this part. Now, I could use a boring bar to do that, but really our roughing boring bar is really small. It's only 3 eighths of an inch and internal machining for lack of a better word, can be really violent. It's hard to get coolant sometimes in there, chip evacuation isn't good in there, and the small insert that I have to use with that small boring bar really just gets beat up. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that Harvey 3 end mill to really open this up and get rid of a lot of that material so my boring bar can come back and really just kinda do some light roughing work. With that, let's go ahead and uh, let's make some chips. Okay, all right, that worked beautifully. As you can see here, we went ahead and we opened that up, and in all honesty, we probably opened it up a lot quicker than we would have with the boring bar, and that end mill is gonna last a lot longer than that insert would cutting through that Hanes 188. So just another reason amongst many why having lie tools on your lathe is a great idea. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish up this ID work right here. We'll do some roughing, we'll do some finishing, put an undercut in there, and then we're gonna put a thread in, and then this part will be, uh, this will be complete and ready to inspect. Let's get it done. Okay, so this part is now machine complete. We went ahead, we finished the ID, we put the thread in, we did all that good stuff. Now I have a range on this of about, looks like five and a half thou. So if this doesn't go, I might bump it up by maybe four, four and a half thou, not the whole way. Cause I know that if the go isn't gonna go, that four and a half isn't gonna take me all the way to the no-go size. So that's a way that I'll kind of creep in on my threads when I'm doing uh, internal and checking with the plug gauge. Now going in here, right, and so we go good. We'll hit our bottom. 
Again, there are always two parts to gauging your threads. You got your go and your no-go. Obviously, you vets know that. All right, thread looks good. All right, so with that, we've kind of checked everything that we can check in the machine. Again, we'll pull this out. We'll make sure that inspection gives us a go. And that is Machining Haynes 188. All right, so this part right here has come out great. We have checked what we needed to in here that we couldn't check out on the machine, and she's good to go. But now the real test begins because now we have to go out and run production on this part. Alloys like Haynes 188, your Inconels, your Hastelloys, your Stellites, these are all materials that really, in all honesty, help make the modern world modern. We went from World War II propeller planes to jet engines to SpaceX wanting to go to Mars. It's materials like these that help us make those leaps. So when you're out there at the machine and you're struggling with these materials and they're kind of making you pull your hair out because you're having a rough day, just know that you really are on the front lines of again bringing modernity to people's front doors. If you have any materials that you'd like to see us cut in the future, let us know down in the comments below and please always hit the like, hit the subscribe, follow us on all our platforms, and we'll see you next time.